Okay, in the lab, uh, got my mask just in case someone walks in. Super Bowl Sunday, my goodness. I'll catch up on the game. All right, so I wanna go through Bioware, and unfortunately, the Bioware computer does not have internet, so I am using my laptop with a camera, and I will try to take a, a picture of the of the screen as we go along. I'll point my my camera uh, to the screen. Uh, Bio, so Bioware is a data acquisition software uh, organized and put together by Kistler. It's a very simple program, which I like. I like because you can plug uh, devices in, you can record devices, you can manage the recording pretty straightforward, and you can export the data in text file, text format. And I like that because then I read that format into MATLAB and I process data. There's no, uh, no real magic to, um, to anything at that point. So let's go through Bioware. And what I want to do is get you enough instruction that you can uh, try to set up uh, some, something and record it, okay? Uh, let's see, let me start with, I should, I should have started with this, the setup for the, the force platform. Let me turn my laptop around so I can see what I'm pointing you at. All right, so uh, you have to know that, um, I've got my microphone here, I better carry that too. Uh, you have to know that um, someone else might come in and move the, um, cables around to be able to record force plate data on, uh, on uh, Vicon, okay? Two different data acquisition systems. We have only one set of cables and we just need to set them up correctly in order to record either on Vicon or on uh, what I call the Bioware computer. So this is the, I'm gonna use the dark gray amplifier. Excuse me, I'm gonna use the dark gray force platform so dark gray, the one on the right there. That, as I showed in the previous video, is amplified by this amplifier. The light gray force platform is amplified by this other amplifier, this one right here, okay? If I'm gonna use that one, I have to set things up a little differently, but I'm gonna use the dark gray because that's the old one, and I have a, a fond affection with uh, that, that uh, force platform. We've been through a lot together. Okay, so uh, cables coming out of here are, um, these are the analog outputs, and the, um, this is the digital inputs. So these cables are ultimately coming over to here. And then this cable is being routed back Oh, it's going actually going over to the Vicon uh, computer. Uh, these are the two cables that are critical to uh, making this work. And then the outputs of the junction box will run down to the HD board in the computer. Okay, so this is the setup. This is the setup for uh, using dark gray and using the uh, Bioware computer. Uh, what else I need to tell you? Uh, I think that's it for, for that. Um, I, I wanna do more on Bioware today. We can do more on the settings uh, another day. All right, let me turn everything back around. manage my cables here. All right, so now what I wanna do is walk you through the software operation side of Bioware. Okay, let me try to make that somewhat level for you. And pull back as much as I can. And I think that should capture enough of the screen. Hopefully, it records okay. It looks okay on my monitor right now. 
All right, so um, I just quickly uh, checked to make sure that the force platform was working, and it is. I've got forces here, Fx, Fy, and Fz. I've got time on the x-axis, and I've got force effectively on the y-axis. All right, so let's go through how to do this. Um, lots of uh, options up here, but not that many. Uh, obviously under file open, you can read in files and uh, Bioware will save the files in DAT format uh, as a default and you can open those up and read them in. Uh, you, uh, let's see, you can save, save as, close, print, all this. And, yeah, I, I hardly ever use any of those data. Here's our acquire trial. That is the uh, the signal to the data acquisitions, acquisition software to initiate recording a, a data set. This is acquired direct, and that's just a shortcut that you can skip a, a, seri a, a set of steps or a step uh, and go right to uh, data acquisition. I'll show you the difference between these two. This is file info, device info. Uh, this will tell us what is available or what's being recorded. Okay, and I'm gonna go through that in more um, detail. Contact times, start times, normalizations, I hardly ever use any of these, okay? These, you gotta understand each data acquisition, acquisition software, they do have um, often many processing options to, uh, to treat the data, however, we don't want to do that. Our, our goal of using this data acquisition program is to export the raw data and then process the data uh, uh, outside of uh, this program. Time slice, filter, uh, resample data, all this. We'll use time slot slice every now and then. I mostly use this when I am uh, doing a demonstration. Like I might want to hit time slice and then I can move the data or, or move the, the beginning and ending data points of that. And so then, you know, I, I extract data. However, when we process data, we don't do any of this in, in BioWare. I only use time slice if I'm uh, doing some type of demonstration in a, uh, in a class type of thing. Same thing with filter. I don't even mess with what BioWare does here. I don't mess with resample. I don't do any of this because all of this happens in MATLAB. I don't even set initial conditions, none of this. So really all that's here in the data is acquired trial or an acquired direct. And I'm gonna show you all those shortcuts. Under view, this is what we're seeing on screen. And I can edit the graph parameters, uh, which is really helpful. So um, here I've got one, I can choose from one, two, three, four, or five plots. So maybe instead of one plot with all data selected uh, for F F FX, FY, FZ, I might want to do three plots. And then I have, uh, oh, actually it's not giving me three plots, it's giving me two and it's telling me to plot two things on one. But here's four plots I can try to uh, mess around with it. Maybe I'll do two. So now I've got two tabs, graph one and graph two. And maybe on one, I'll put FZ. And then on two, maybe I'll put FX and FY. And I hit OK. And now I've got two plots. Again, when you, uh, well, again, when you are collecting data, you want to set up your graphs so you are seeing what you need to see each time. You can spend some time uh, getting the labels on these graphs. That's always good. Uh, so there's, um, you know, you, you can uh, right mouse click and uh, here you can do some different options on your graph. I won't go through all that, but you can set that all up here. This is just for viewing data when you're collecting it. This has nothing to do with your output. Remember, we're using this program to collect data and output, output the raw data or as raw as possible. Okay, that's what we're looking for. But make, make your plots uh, makes sense when you are collecting uh, data. Now, what? here's a trick. 
is I actually need to, um, if I collect data right now, uh, it will plot the data based upon a configure, the last configuration that's loaded. All right, so that is right here. Default view, load and save. This is under view configuration. Uh, so the default view, I can set the default view based upon a VCF view configuration file, okay? That is a uh, file that Bioware will read in and then plot the data based upon that configuration file. So right now, this, this view configuration file is set to the Elgon project, which we actually did last time. I could go open up and I can see if there is a ground reaction force configuration file. I don't see one. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and save it. So I'm gonna go back up here to view, view configuration. I'm gonna save this configuration as GRF. GRF, and I'm just gonna call it 2021, just in case there's another GRF one somewhere. I'm gonna save that now. I'm not done. I actually need to make that configuration file my default view. So I'm gonna go back over here, click on these three dots, go over here and I'm gonna choose GRF 2021. That way, every time I collect data, it will use that configuration file and will show the data uh, just like this. Uh, all right, so that's that. Uh, threshold, I don't use that here. 3D view, I don't use that here. I don't, statistics every now and then, I'll, again, on demonstration or if I'm just checking how things work, I can hit that and it will tell me, you know, specific uh, um, statistics based upon which plot I'm on. I'm on this plot down here. And so this is FX and FY. That can be helpful when I'm debugging something. Uh, I can also do a moving cursor which is really helpful, you know, if I'm uh, just trying to check things out quickly, I may want to, you know, quickly, oh, okay, let me see what the max is uh, for uh, this, this setup. So, but we don't ever use the, those options for collecting data, and we never use those for uh, processing data. Those are only for double checking and making sure everything is uh, set up correctly. All right, you can okay. All right, um, let me go under setup. Okay, current graph, this is just uh, setting up the graph. Default graph, again, you have to set up a default view. So it will come up every, the same every time. Global settings, don't mess with this at all, okay? Although at some point we may come down and actually do something with FFT. And what's really pretty cool is when we collect data, we can do a quick FFT as we, as we uh, process or as we collect, it's not actually correct. It's not the right way to do FFT, but a lot of times it's a nice demonstration that I use. All right, here's our hardware. All right, now this is the critical part. ADD board, don't mess with this. Amplifiers, don't mess with this. Devices, this is what we actually want to uh, play or go into. ADD board, this is just the ADD boards that we actually have in here. And we have some settings in here that um, if you change these, this will change your data. I can change the gain on the A to D board and it will actually uh, in, in influence the magnitude of the data. So we don't wanna, we don't wanna change that. The plus or minus 10 volts. The other option is, sorry. The other option is to go to plus or minus five volts or other voltage. And uh, as we get more into A to D boards, the details of this, uh, this will influence your data set. So if your data are coming out twice as large or maybe half as large as you're expecting it, this is one thing that I actually go and look at is uh, the range that the A to D board is set to uh, record. All right, so let's do that. All right, but we wanted to, what I really wanna show you is devices. But the amplifiers, that's just our amplifier, 9865, and these are the settings time constant off, that's important. If you start changing this, it will uh, change how the amplifier is going to behave. All right, back to hardware, devices. Okay, this is the critical part. 
I've talked a little bit about this with the Elgon. I have the dark gray in the active device setting and through channels one through eight. The dark gray will always be one through eight or your force platform will always be one through eight. All right, that's just the way our, our junction box is uh, set up. These are all other devices down here. Never, ever, ever, ever delete unless you created a device, all right? Don't delete. What we do is we either add uh, devices to the um, uh, device setup or we remove them from the top here. Never delete. I wish I could put a piece of tape over this so you never hit delete. Never. Never. All right. <laughs> you, and I'm emphasizing that because we've all done it. And what happens is once we delete, we actually lose the calibration settings and we have to go find the paperwork to re-enter those calibration settings. And the calibration settings are um, really a pain in the neck uh, to remember. And you know, who's gonna remember these numbers here? You're just not going to. So without these numbers, our force platform will not behave correctly, okay? So add or remove. And then when you do add something, uh, you need to specify the channel that it goes in. And that corresponds with the channel number on the junction box. All right, so I've got dark gray in there. Uh, all right, so now, uh, so that's your devices. And you can add more devices. Uh, we have, uh, let's see, oh, how many channels does this A to D port have? Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. But your A to D board is limited in the number of channels it has. Um, and that is um, what you're limited to. But you can add more devices, accelerometers, uh, photo cells, square waves, any of these devices actually down in here or other devices that you can actually build. Square wave, what have you, all different types of accelerometers as well. And then those devices are all collected concurrently at the same time. All right, so now we are at a point where we're ready. Oh, I'm not gonna mess with these. Um, although these can be helpful, I do use this on scope often to debug uh, an instrument because it will show me what's happening in real time. And that can be really helpful when trying to figure out how a device is uh, behaving. All right, let's see. All right, so now let's collect some data. That's noise. So there's these two buttons here, acquire trial and acquire direct. And remember what I told you they're here as well, okay? So I'm gonna do acquire trial and it brings up this menu. This menu uh, stipulates all the parameters that you're going to um, use for your data set. Your length of data set that you're gonna collect, the rate, your sample rate, Direction control, this just has to do with the forward uh, the platform and uh, we're, it, this button just indicates which way someone's running. So it does allow you that if you're running in both directions, you can quickly change the direction of uh, FY. Here's our devices. If we have any, uh, if we say, oh, we needed to add another device, I can quickly go back to my device setup right there, okay? All right, so let's see, do, do, do close start. Um, I don't mess with the weight on here, again, because I just want to get the raw data out. Um, okay, under, sorry, let me do this again, setup. There's all this information right here. Right now, I'm gonna leave it to trigger on a key. However, we can set the uh, system to record based upon a certain trigger that it sees in the data set. I'll go through that uh, later. All right, I'm gonna hit start. It reads voltage offsets. No one can be standing, nothing should be on the force platform. Your instrument should be set to zero at that point. And now I just need to hit press enter to begin data acquisition. Once I hit okay, it will start collecting data. I'm gonna run over to the force platform. Stand on it and off. Oh, good, did it within 10 seconds, and there's our data. 
It's the same graph format as the previous one because this is our configuration file. This is the default view. We saved that configuration file, so now I have all those data. So now I'm going to save the data and I need to put it in the right folder. I'll just put it over here and I'll just call it test. There's probably a test file, but that's okay. Now notice that was in DAT format. If I'm ready to export, I do file, save as, txt. It will keep the same file name, hit test. It will ask me what I want to export. I'm going to check all three. And if I have other devices, I may even need to do um, a drop down arrow here and then find that device, like maybe an accelerometer or an Elgon, something like that. Okay. If I want my center of pressure data, uh, I need to export those as well. So whatever I select in, in here uh, is what I'm going to get in my file. These are the individual channel information. And I'll export these only when I'm starting to debug the force platform, if something is not um, uh, coming out right. These moments, these are moments about force platform access. This is not joint moments. So don't uh, confuse these with joint moments. Friction, this is just in the horizontal plane. And this is just using the ratio of the uh, normal force, uh, vertical force, and the horizontal uh, direction. I, I never mess with that at all. Okay, so I'm not going to export those. Uh, I'll export data. And now I should have, and uh, I do have a, let me make sure I can find it now. Uh, well, the problem with this computer is there's multiple biomech folders. I don't know why uh, that is, but here's that. And here's my test file that I just put output today. We can double check. Let's go to details, 2721. And if I open that up, here's all the information I need. Time, FX, FY, FZ. And this is what I read into MATLAB. And then all the processing of this file happens in MATLAB. It looks a little jumbled right now. I can read that into Excel, and I just need to read it into an Excel and delimit the file. Um, we could do that another day. All right, but that should get you up and running with uh, using Bioware. Don't delete devices, add or remove devices. That's it. Okay, thanks.